users can swipe our cards from left or to right to mark them as being guessed correctly or not. But there's no visual guidance between the two, two directions. It's not really clear which one's good, which one's bad. So borrowing controls from dating apps like Tinder will make swiping right be a good thing and swiping left be a bad thing. So you got the answer wrong. And we'll solve this problem in two ways. For a phone with default settings, like out of the box iOS settings, will make the cards become colored green or red as they swipe to the right or swipe to the red, a uh, left, sorry, before they fade away. But if the user enabled the option differentiate without color, will instead show some extra UI over our background that's a bit clearer which direction's which. Let's start with the first pass on the card view. Um, right now our card view is done with this rounded rectangle in the background of a Z stack, which has a fill widener, a shadow like that. We're gonna replace that with some more advanced code. We'll give it a background of the same rounded rectangle, except it'll be green or red depending on the gesture movement. So dragging right up to the left. And then we'll make the main white fill, uh, this thing here, which is above the background of course, fade out as the drag movement gets stronger. First, the background. Add this before the shadow modifier. If background, oh here, background modifier, uh, rounded rectangle, corner radius of 25, again, style continuous. And this will be filled with a color. Which one? Well, if offset.width is greater than zero, we'll use green. Otherwise, we'll use red. As for this fill opacity here, this is gonna be very similar to the same logic we had for the whole card fading away down here. Except, previously we used two minus one fiftieth of the absolute movement. This time, we're gonna use one minus instead, and it makes a really nice effect. We have two minus for the main card opacity. So as you move from zero to 50 points in either direction, the opacity doesn't change. It's moving from two down to one. But the next 50 points to the right or left, then it fades down from one to zero. So it fades away only after you move a certain distance. We're gonna use one minus here. So the color appears immediately as you start dragging. So it gets stronger and stronger until you move 50 points away, it's maximum strength. And then the card starts to fade away. So it's a bit more interesting, I think. So I'll copy that line to my clipboard, the whole opacity line we have already, and then replace this fill white line with this. And I'm gonna use line breaks here because it gets complicated in a second. Line breaks like that, fill.white.opacity, and then use one minus that value there. And now, if you run the app again, you should see the cards blend from white to green immediately. So if I go to the right now, it becomes green straight away, and then it goes far enough, it starts to fade away as well. So the color starts kicking in immediately, straight away, like that, boom, or like that. Uh, but the fade only happens once the color hits its full color, about there-ish, there we go, starts fading away. Awesome. However, as nice as our code is, it won't work well for folks who have red-green colorblind, because we're using red-green for our card colors, and that's the most common, I think, form of colorblindness, if not one of the most common. And as a result, it's not clear which side is which, like which side is good. And they'll see the brightness change. They'll see the, the green be brighter than the red because green's a very, very bright color, but they won't know is, is bright good or, or bad. They don't know. To fix this, we're going to add an environment property to track whether we should be using color for this purpose or not. And then disable the whole red, green colorblind, uh, red, green effect, sorry, when that property is true. So we're gonna start with a new property inside card view, at environment, backslash dot, that one. You can type active to get it using code completion, and then copy and paste all of it, please. Var that with a D uh, lowercase in the front, it's fine. And I can use that for both the fill and background for our rounded rectangle to make sure we fade it out to white uh, smoothly. Now it's important to use this thing for both because as the card fades out, the background color will start to bleed through the fill. So I make sure you use it for both. So we'll say uh, with our fill here, if we are currently differentiating without color, then use white. Otherwise, use, use dot white, dot opacity, yada, 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 as before. 
So if this is true, use full white. Otherwise, use white with an opacity modifier, like that. And you can bring up one line if you want to do like that, make it a fraction easier to read. As for the background here, if we are using differentiate without color, we'll use a background of nil, no background. Otherwise, a background of our rounded rectangle like that. Otherwise, the same. And so when the default configuration, we'll get the same red to green fade we had before. However, now when this property is true, uh, we'll get full white the entire time. So it's no longer clear at this point which side is good, but we're now gonna add some extra UI to content view so it shows visually on the screen with icons which side is good, which side is bad. Now, earlier, we made a very particular structure in our content view here. We had a Z stack here with a V stack and another Z stack. Um, and I explained it'd be more useful over time. This is an example of where it's more useful. We're going to put this new extra UI into the outer Z stack. We're gonna show some buttons at the bottom and left and right side of the screen saying which side's good, which side's bad. To do that, we want to start with a new property again to handle differentiate without color. So at environment, backslash dot, act diff, grab that to your clipboard, var d paste, there we go. And now after the v stack, we're going to say, if we are currently using differentiate without color, make another v stack with a space in. So push all the content to the bottom of the screen. And then after the space will be a h stack. We'll show two images, one saying bad, one saying good. And we can say image uh, system name is xmark.circle with a bit of padding and a background of dot black to opacity 0.7 and a clip shape of circle. And I'll put that whole image and modifiers onto my clipboard. Then say there's a spacer, then paste another one of those things, but this one is an xmark.circle it is checkmark.circle. The whole H-stack will have a foreground color of white, dot white even, with a font of large title and some padding around it so it doesn't go quite edge to edge. So we've got this V-stack with a spacer in so it'll push the entire contents to the bottom of the screen below our cards. Then we have an image saying the bad picture, then a big spacer, so nothing in the middle, and then another one saying the good picture so it's a lot clearer what's going on. Hopefully now, if I press Command R, we should see it working. Let's find out. So here's our standard UI with no extra options enabled. If I just bring this window to the side slightly, there we go. Um, and I go down to the overrides down here, toggle it on, then check the last one. Boom, you'll see our new X and check mark come right in, making it really clear which side is which. A drag, it stays white the entire time, as you'd expect. So it's much, much nicer for folks who don't want to use color. Now, this extra work didn't take much. It was actually straightforward to do. It fits into our UI perfectly, I think. But it matters. It means every user gets a great experience, regardless of their access needs. And honestly, that's what we should always be aiming for.